All right, and I want to make a video response to um, Southern Paladin um, regarding um, his most recent video that I finally just watched. And again, I apologize for not watching it before. What the hell? Oh my God. Sorry, this girl at work just, she does not know what she's doing. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing how she just, you tell her to do shit and she doesn't listen and she just does whatever she does. And Sorry. I'm just, that's my job. I go in and I fix people's mistakes all fucking day long. Um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, so Pelly, you bring up an interesting concept. Bible literalism. And I've thought about that quite a bit too. How important is it that we, we, people who, who um, profess the Christian faith, how important is it that we take everything in the Bible literally? How important is it? How important is it that um, if uh, the story of Noah and the flood was just a allegory to kind of, uh, I don't know, demonstrate a... Uh, demonstrate or like create an illustration on the nature of God and the nature of humans and how God always has mercy on, uh, you know, certain like people that obey his law and, and, and God destroys people that don't. Um, whether we take that literally or we just take that as like a parable or a like, I don't know. I don't know why that would matter. Um, I don't know why it would matter if you identified laziness to be an evil spirit or if you identified it just to be a personal psychological problem. As long as you identify it and you resist it, I don't know, I don't know what the difference is there. Um, I think that you're going to find that the average human being that walks on the planet in 2023 uh, is not going to be open to uh, the idea that there's spiritual warfare going on and that there's, you know, literal angels on your shoulder and demons on your shoulder and they're whispering in your ear and you're conflicted. Yeah. I think most people with the development of psychology to where we have it today say, well, that's just my id and my, my, and, and my super ego having a fight and my ego is trying to decide which one to listen to. Cause that's the way Freud put it. Freud splits your splits your mind not your brain but your mind into three categories id super ego and ego and the id being the like i just want to do what i want to do right i want to fight i want to fuck i want to eat right those are the things that you want to do i want to if i see some somebody who has something that i want i want to take it you know we all have that but your super ego is the part of you which you kind of have to be raised into and you have to um we all have that there whether we were raised with it or not but it needs to be developed right you, like it's developed in church it's developed in school it's developed in 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 your in your household hopefully uh it's your conscience that says look there's all these things you want to do but you really need to resist those things you know you can't just do whatever the fuck you want however you want to do it, whenever you want, want to do it. You know, you can't just kill everybody you don't like. Uh, you can't just fuck every girl, whether she wants to uh, be with you or not. Uh, there's certain there's certain things that you have to do to maintain order, right? So that's the id and the superego. And then the ego is like me. It's like who I am. It, the ego is the decision maker in your mind. Are you going to listen to your id or are you going to listen to your superego? And they say that there's an unhealthy balance on both sides, right? People who have too much id, what are they? They're serial killers, right? Way too much. They just do whatever the hell they want. They're very smart. And they and they know that they're doing things to go undetected. Um, and then you have people who just 
they just sacrifice too much of their of themselves and their lives and everything and they give 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 to everybody and they never ask anything in return those are people with overly developed super egos or or overly developed conscience they feel guilty about everything all the time they're always saying oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry when they're actually they didn't do anything wrong but they're still apologizing for everything that they might have done wrong that's somebody with you know an overdeveloped sense of uh, an an overdeveloped super ego and those are tend to be pretty miserable people deep down. Um, a lot of your suicide victims, they're, they're people who just struggle with too much guilt and struggle with too much of, you know, I'm a failure and blah, blah, blah. Um, so that is psychology's answer to the spiritual warfare. Now, you can say that those two things are one and the same right? You can say that. You can say, well, what does it really matter if it's a, like, maybe, maybe your thoughts are, maybe another way of describing your thoughts would be say spirits. Maybe that's just another way of describing, like you get this nasty thought that pops up in your brain, right? Just everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do for a living. I don't care how pious or righteous you think you are. Everybody gets those ideas every once in a while. They're like, dude, I should just, I should beat the living shit out of that motherfucker over there. He deserves it. It would feel good if I did it. Or, hey, that dude just got up and walked away from, his, he just left his wallet sitting there. I should, maybe just to teach him a lesson, I should just go up and take his wallet and empty all the cash out. And I would, you know, I would happen to get, you know, rich in the meantime, but still, you know, it'd be good for him and teach him a lesson. Like everybody has these thoughts these extremely selfish, evil thoughts. Um, is that is that just who we are? I would argue, yes, that's just who we are, you know. Um, but for you to say that the devil's whispering things in your ear, I, you know, you got to understand that back in back in Jesus's time, they didn't have psychology, dude. They 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 didn't have it. And I'm not saying that we're more advanced than Jesus. I'm saying that these things had to be explained to people 2,000 years ago on a level where they understood what the hell you're talking about. Try standing up in front of a group of people and talk like 2,000 years ago and talking about your conscience and, and your biological urges. and They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking? Biological urges? What? They didn't understand science, evolution, um, psychology, biology. They didn't understand any of that stuff. So, you know, there's just so much lost in translation nowadays. When you try to read a 2,000 plus year old document um, and apply it to current current times like the things that we know and again i'm not saying that we know better than god did or be better than jesus did or better than anybody else who wrote the bible back then i'm saying that we 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 understand things in different terms now we define things very differently we don't call them evil spirits but again does it matter does it matter what you call them i i some people like you would argue that it does matter what that you know, that you should call them because that's what they are. Um, but again, most of society rejects the, the notion that there are spirits literally flying around, both good and bad and all that stuff. Most people reject it. So you understand that when you start talking to people about evil spirits and good spirits and all that, like they just check out. They're just like, okay, this guy's a kook. Now everything else that comes out of your mouth after that, doesn't matter how true, how good, how helpful it is, they're not going to listen to you because you started off the conversation with, hey, there's evil spirits flying around. Like most people are just like, oh, God, not another one of those dudes. Okay, go ahead. Tell me, finish what you were going to say, you know, and but they're not listening. They're thinking, okay, how much longer do I have to stay in here and talk to this guy before I can leave? That's what they're thinking. So, you know, I just think it's important to, pe to, to meet people where they are in their own thought processes. 
and their own understanding. And, uh, you know, if you're fighting racism, does it matter if you call it racism or if you call it bigotry or if you call it evil spirits or whatever you call it? If that's your thing, fight it and explain it in terms where people understand it. If 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 your if your thing is to fight for, um, you know, children who are being abused, you know, you want to put it you want to put the problem in terms of how people understand it. You know, if you're running around talking about evil spirits or causing people to abuse children or whatever. I don't know if Congress is going to listen to you while you're testifying in front of them, you know, or people on TV are just going to point and laugh. Could it be true that these are actual spirit? I mean, I don't even understand how the spirit world world works because the spirit world is not the spirit world is not from what I understand the spirit world, the way that it's supposed to work. It's not um, constricted by. Um, any type of physical things. So in other words, you and I, so pal, can, are, are in a way we're having a spiritual connection right now because we're discussing things. You hear the inflection in my voice. You hear the words that I'm using, how I'm using them. Uh, you, you, you hear my communication basically. And then I hear your communication. And so there's sort of the spiritual connection, almost like you know, you hear about people that meet on the internet or whatever, right? And a boy and a girl, and they meet on the internet and they fall in love over the phone. Well, how can you do that with, with somebody? Because there's a spiritual connection that's happening like over the phone. And that person could be in England and you're in the United States. And it doesn't matter because because it, as long as you can communicate, that's how spirits spiritual connections happen through communication. And there's, there's no, there's no, you don't have to be standing right next to somebody in the same way that you would have to be standing close to somebody in order, in order to catch a cold from them or any other virus. You need to be within proximity of them to catch that. But spiritual connections can happen uh, over the phone, over the internet, over whatever. So, um, it, because sp spirits are mainly like emotional uh, and is if you can find a way to um, express emotions uh, like we're doing right now over the phone, over email, over internet, over whatever, um, that spiritual connections can be made, whether good or bad or benign. Um, and so if that's how you want to define it, then I'm okay with calling that spiritual. But, but if you want to define it in a sense that like... <sighs> these actual entities that are flying around, but you just can't see them. It's just like, now you're talking about ghosts basically and shit like that. And it's just like, you know, I don't, if you're talking about something that is not in the physical world, then you can't define it in physical terms. My man, you can't call Satan a person because I'm a person. You're a person. Uh, you can't call, I can't remember what you named that, that other spirit that you were talking in your, in, about in your, last video, but, um, if they don't exist in physical space, then we can't describe them in physical ways. Does that make sense? 